What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, John from the Gamer Dude here. Welcome you back to another episode of Danganronpa. Danganronpa. And in today's episode of Danganronpa, we have some things to take care of. Um, so we have to go to floor three because we have to uh, tell the peeps that, hey, we have to tell Kyoko. Hey, this is where the dead body is, were found. And you get to hang out with the dem dem them dead bodies. If I can get up these stairs. Yeah, Kyoko. So this is where the dead bodies were found. Um, they were found in the repository room. Um, and in the repository room, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know why they were dragged here. So if you could, like, tell me and, like, be a good little girl and just tell me literally everything about the case. Let me know that you are the spy and uh, it's fine. No. Honestly, like I said, I don't, I, I was talking about it. I don't think she's the spy. I am like d hard dead set that she is not the spy. I think it's, I think right at this current moment, I think at this current moment that Hero is the spy and just saying, and I think that because Hero's the spy, he didn't kill, and that kill went to player 16, whoever that may be. Hifumi and Taka. For a moment, Kyoko seemed to get rigid, but only for a moment. So then. Well then, let's get started. She crouched down next to Taka and without hesitation began poking and prodding at the bodies. The Monokuma file was right. They were killed using similar weapons. Her movements were so smooth, she was so calm. Seeing how comfortable she was actually made me feel... A little more comfortable. Okay, what do you what do you what do you think about? I see. Makoto, I found something. You did. Remember the wrist 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 watch Taka always wore on his left hand? He did. Yeah. Are you so oblivious to the people around you? Or do you dislike people that much? This latter half, uh I don't freaking care what people do. I like uh, most of the time. No, that's not worth it. Anyway, you said you had a watch. So then. Take a look. It's broken. You can see the hands aren't moving. It's most likely broke when he had his encounter with his assailant. And if you notice, the hands are frozen at just past 6 o'clock. So that would mean the watch was broken sometime just after 6. That's right. Last night, Taka's watch definitely wasn't broken. Hey, you! How long were you going to keep us waiting? Taka's irritated voice pierced the air as he started pointing at his wristwatch. It was almost 10 o'clock. You know that bedtime is for little boys and girls. In other words, so if it worked at 10 last night, it couldn't have bro been broken at 6 p.m. Meaning that it must have happened at 6 o'clock this morning. Broken wristwatch has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. However, and that's not all. Look at Taka's left hand. It appears he's gripping something. You're right. There's something white in there. Can you try and pry it out? Me? Rigor, rigor mortis has already set in. Boys are better suited for this kind of manual labor, right? Uh, uh, okay. As much as I didn't want to, I grasped Taka's cold hand. The ice cold hand was nearly enough to cause my heart to stop beating. But at the same effort, I was finally able to free the object. A piece of paper. Was that all that was in his hand? Yeah, that's it. Just a little scrap of paper. Doesn't seem like much of a clue, does it? I wonder about that. Kyoko turned to Hifumi's body. So Let's check Hifumi's body now. Perhaps he's left, uh, he left us a clue of his own. The bigger problem I have right now. How is the killer able to move Hifumi's massive corpse from the nurse's office, from where he was discovered, to the repository, all the way from the first floor to the third, and all without anyone noticing it? I just can't see how that's possible. Further, it seems that Hifumi died to a, from a blow to the head. It was most likely caused by likely killing was Justice Hammer 3, which would be found in the nurse's office. But <clears throat> when we found the body in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered in blood. And now they're spotless. Does it mean somebody has wiped the glasses clean? But why would anybody do that? We just, just we talked about that already. No, we don't need to, Sakura. So, did you find anything? I did. More than I expected, to be honest. Look at this. A wad of paper. Hifumi had hidden, had it hidden on him. Hidden? 
he stuffed it in his pants, so I can only assume it was he hid it. He'd hidden it on purpose. You see, in his pants. Wait, so you? Why is that? It was just his pants. It's not like his socks or something. I don't know what she means by that. Anyway, let's take a look at the paper. Go ahead, open it up. When I think it's more important, but it, it better be more important. Hifumi, or I'll never forgive you for this. A note. I found a hole. Maybe we can use this to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone else for now. Let's meet in the equipment room at 6 a.m. So... That sounds very familiar. That's it. It's the same thing Hiro said. Then, what he was telling us was the truth. However... Although, it's not exactly the same, is it? Uh, um... Last night, someone had slipped a weird note under my door, and here's what it said. I found a hole. Maybe we can use it to escape. Monokuma can't find out, so don't tell anyone or else. So let's meet in the rec room at 1 a.m. Exactly. The time is different. Hiro told us the note said to meet at 1 a.m. But the note that he, they wrote Hifumi asked him to meet at 6 a.m. Right? Hold on. Just because Hifumi had the note doesn't mean it was meant for him, huh? So... Part of it had been torn off, right? So I think it likely the mean, there's some meaning there. The meaning... There's some meaning to the part of it being ripped. Um, could it be maybe explain a little bit more? Think hey. carefully. Why would anybody be clutching that scrap of paper so tightly? I have no idea. So what if it wasn't just a scrap he just or it wasn't just a scrap of paper when he was holding it? What if it was something more important? And how could would something more important like that become a mere scrap of paper? Well that's what we need to answer. Note who we had. Hey. And while we're at it, I should tell you one other thing. The two victims, this time, definitely had their e-handbooks on them. So the handbooks have nothing to do with how the murders were carried out. Not that there was any reason to think they were connected to the killings in the first place. So you're saying that I don't have to think about handbooks this time, right? right? If you didn't have to think about them at all, I wouldn't have gone out of my way to mention it. All I said is that they weren't used to help carry out the murders. So they can, they may come, there may come a point, however, where the handbook may play a role. A handbook may play a role. I don't think I understand. But if Kyoko thinks it's important, I better keep it in mind. E-handbook has been added to the truthful section. The trial is about to begin! Oh, I'm sorry. You're saying... I'm sorry, Monica. I cut you off. I deserve to die! to the red door on the first floor of the school. <laughs> See you soon. I, again, I don't think it's Hero. It's unfortunate, but I suppose this is where our investigation comes to an end. You'll have to figure out the rest by yourself and come to a proper conclusion. Yeah, you're Should right. We well, we better get going. Okay, okay. Okie dokie. Here we are at the red door. Everyone had heard Monokuma's proclamation and they gathered at the red door. And as soon as we were all there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why are there two of you? Monokuma? What did you do? Hello, hello, hello. He's multiplied? Nope, it's not multiplication. It just looks that way because it's an illusion. It's moving so fast it looks like I've multiplied. <laughs> Can you guys tell which one the real Monokuma is? No. Can we just get on the elevator already? You're not playing along, along, along. We're not here to play with you. Okay, okay, fine. Even if that's everyone here ready to go, please board the train. I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. Okay, then shall we? <laughs> Hold on. I'm not mentally prepared yet. You'll never be mentally prepared, hero. You can't run away anymore. You're gonna pay for your sins. I told you already I didn't do it for serious. Mm. That reminds me. Did you ever find the other costume or the note? Uh, well, no, but... How unfortunate that it would seem that we have our culprit. Uh, 
This isn't the place to talk about it. Save your accusations for when we get to the courtroom. That's right. She's right. Let's get down there first. And then the story can really begin. Good idea. That's right. I have to. I have to do it. I can't let anyone who ever killed Ofumi and Taka get away with it. For everyone who's still alive, and for the two that lost their lives. The one who killed Ofumi and Taka. The one who killed two of our friends. The killer is... Someone in this room. Yep, I'm, I don't even want to get into, like, talking to anybody. I have a solid idea of my thought processes. I'm sure that's going to be proven wrong, and I'm okay with that. I have to understand that things are going to happen. It is bound to happen. But again, I don't think it's Hero. I think it's Celeste or random person we don't know about that will be introduced right now. The steel box began to move. Like, honestly, that we because there's, there's a student 16, and we're yet to know of him. The clunking of the elevator kept a company while we went further down. There was no going back from here. Until we settled this, we couldn't go anywhere. Not sure how long it was before the elevator finally came to a stop. But the elevator doors did slide open, opening up onto our cruel fate. A new room! Hmm, well I see you all gathered together like this. I realize how few of you are left, so your school life is slowly reaching its climax. It's only because of you. Why? Why are you making us do such cruel things to each other? What? What? Do you really hate me so much? But I'm so cute. Uh, stop giving around and begin the trial already. Yeah, I am, I'm, I'm with B by B Akia. Don't rush me. Of course I'm going to start it. But I would never, like, stay tuned for the action-packed class trial after this commercial break. I'd never hold on to you like that. Okay, let's begin. Get to your assigned seats now. And so the curtain once again had opened. A deadly judgment, deadly deception, a deadly betrayal, riddle, defense, and a deadly faith. The deadly class trial. You guys actually get to see part of it now, which is nice. Okay, let's set our skills. Let's get ourselves situated. Um, we got a little bit more SP this time, so we should be able to add another skill. Steady's the aim of Hangman's Gambit. I'm not worried about that. No, cool. That's not a. I'm not worried about that skill. Unless that's the only skill that we got, but I don't think that is. Allows you to reload the bullets at once. Effective during bullet battle time. Honestly, I don't really feel the need to add one. I will add handiwork just because I feel like that's more worth it. Reload two bullets at once. I don't know what that'll do, so let's see. We might as well. Let's get on to the show. Wow, so many X's. Your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Now then, to begin with, we already know who did it. No, we don't, Hina. Was that? It was Hero. He does not have an alibi for when the murder took place, and we found it in that suit. Don't try and deny it. You killed them. I didn't. Someone knocked me out. I, I was asleep the whole time. I don't know anything about it. Check your murdering notes, murderer! Uh, guys. Are you calling a murderer? Guys, guys, guys. Thank Hero, but we do have evidence. Blueprints for the suit. Parts we assume were used to build it. And all of it was found in your room. You have to admit, the evidence is quite compelling. It points to you as having created the suit and wearing it while committing crime after crime. How many times do I have to tell you? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is Hero really the killer or? Before anything else, we have to make that clear. Agreed. They need to, like, I need to protect Hero. I, I hate the fact that I have to do this, but I think I have to protect Hero here. Okay. Oh, okay. Every 
can be found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are all proof enough that you are the culprit. I don't think so. I, I, I don't know anything about that stuff. It's not true. It's a conspiracy. Hero, why? Why did you kill them? No! Just hold on a second! Compelling evidence that Hero is the killer. Is it really true? No. Ebbs, the suit parts, they are all proof enough. Shoot! I don't know. Everything is found in your room. The blueprints, the suit parts, they are... There we go. Are we sure Hero really made those blueprints? What do you mean? Well, take a look at this. It's the note that Hero wrote. There! Okay, I thought it was going to be something about the note, not this. Okay. That, that's, okay. I didn't think that Yasuhiro's, uh, message. Oh, it said, it said Yasuhiro's message, not Yasuhiro's account. Oh my god. That was the case of John Can't Read. I figured that's what we were going to go on. Okay. Absolutely. When you compare it to the blueprints, there's no way you could think the same person made both of them. Unless that person made it a point to disguise their handwriting. Even then, I don't think that would be a thing. No, the differences are bigger than that, I think. Agreed, Sakura. Come on. I'm not smart enough to think of trying to change my handwriting anyway. True. Are you saying you don't think Hero's the culprit? I haven't thought that from the beginning. And he's not the only one. I think Hero's innocent as well. Yes, Biakia! Okay. Let's go! Who was in that robo-justice suit? Is it like Hero said? Was there really someone running around in a second suit? The suspicious individual hidden within the suit. Go ahead, Makoto. Tell them who it was. And of course he passes it off to me. Who was in the Robo Justice suit? What? Hina, the costume was super big on me. No way I could walk around in that thing. You saw me try it on for yourself, Makoto. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Is that really true? Maybe I should think about this again. Okay, why are we talking about Hero? What? Other than Hero, I can't think of anyone else it could have been. Obviously, he was the one in that particular suit. And we never found any kind of second suit. Then there can be no doubt. Hero is the prime suspect. That doesn't make any sense. You just said Hero didn't do it. It makes perfect sense. Hero was the suspicious individual in the suit, but he's not the culprit. So what you're saying is... That's right. The culprit in this case has nothing to do with being in the robo-justice suit. What? Now that's a bold assumption! And what reason do you have to make such a statement? You do have a reason, yes? Of course. But before we get to that, there's something else we need to clarify first. So let's get that out of the way. Hey, stop trying to boss us around! All things have a proper order. So what is it? What needs to be clarified? We must clarify the method of transportation for Taka's lifeless body. It would seem that his corpse was moved using certain particular items. Makoto, can you tell us what they were? The dolly. Okay. There's one more thing.
Do you think that has anything to do with how the bodies are moved? Why am I struggling so hard right now? It's the dolly. Oh, da 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 da. The tarp. I got it. That I'm 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 slow today. A dolly and a tarp, right? What's with the attitude? So, let's see if I can explain. Papa's body disappeared from the equipment room, and then we rediscovered it in the repository. And when we found it for the second time, it was wrapped in a blue tarp, right? It was the same tarp that up until then was stored in the equipment room. So the killer must have seen it there and decided to use it when they moved Taka's body. That way, they wouldn't leave any bloodstains while they were moving it. Okay, that explains the tarp. And the dolly? Same thing. I'm sure the dolly was in the equipment room when we first found Taka's body there. But when the body disappeared, so did the dolly. Later, when Taka's body reappeared in the repository, So did the doll. In other words, you think they use the dolly to move the body. Am I right? But are you sure you are not mistaken? Huh? Are you absolutely positive the dolly was in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? That dolly was made specifically for moving large objects between the repository and the art room. It would be very strange indeed to discover it had made its way to the equipment room. It's not possible that it was in the repository all along, and you simply didn't realize it? She's raised an objection. How do you respond? There is no shame in being wrong. Nobody expects much from you anyway. We have all accepted the fact that you rarely understand what is going on around you. Wow, I've never had been had anyone sound so nice while being so mean at the same time. Maybe I can change her mind. If I can just explain why the dolly must have been moved from the out of the repository. A new element has been added to bullet time battles. Would you like to hear more? Oh no. Let's talk about reloading. Okay. This is the we we just got this. Okay. Starting with the next bullet time battle, we are gonna add one more ingredient to the recipe. Oh boy. On the bottom of the screen, underneath the tempo marker, you'll see your ammo count. Up until now, there hasn't been a limit on how you or how you destroy your opponent's statements. From now on, just logging on and pressing the Y button won't be enough to handle them. For now, it'll cost you one bullet to destroy a single remark. Once you run out of bullets, you can't destroy any more statements. No matter how locked on you are. However, you can reload by pressing the X button. Just by, just like locking on, you have to press the X button in time with the tempo marker. Basically, just remember that the X button now is functioning along with the A and Y buttons. You will automatically reload at the start of Fever Time. Your ammo will not decrease. Oh. But if your accident difficulty is set to gentle, you will not have to reload at all. Which, in this case, you can ignore everything I just said. Then, good luck and have fun. Moment of truth. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Lies will get you nowhere. Do your work. Away with you. You miserable wretch. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Life will get you nowhere. Do your worst. You miserable wretch. You have it wrong. I cannot agree. You are a fool. So pathetic. Life will get you nowhere. Do your worst. Away with 
Oh my. I cannot agree. You are a fool. Life will get you nowhere. I cannot agree. This should prove it. If you're asking for proof that the dolly moved, I have it right here. When I found the dolly in the repository, one of the wheels had a blood stain on it. There was a pool of blood in the equipment room with a tire mark in it that matched the dolly wheel's tread. The killer probably rolled the dolly through the blood on accident as they wheeled the body out of the room. Probably somebody who couldn't lift the talk his body to begin with. I don't know. Maybe the person who's challenging me. And as the blood dried on the tire, they moved the body into the repository. So there's my proof that the dolly was used to move Taka's body. <laughs> Gee, Celeste, did Celeste really hate me well, that much? Anyway, that was just something we had to get out of the way. Let's get back to the main subject. Yeah, the subject of how Robo Justice didn't do it. What kind of robot is it? I'm not sure that really matters. I'd be happy to explain why the occupant of the suit couldn't possibly be the killer. If you look back on how the body was transported, it will become immediately obvious. If you look at the body, how the body was moved, it'll be clear what the person in the suit couldn't have done it. What does he mean by that? Hmm. As we know, Taka was killed in the equipment room. And from there, the body was moved to the repository, correct? Yes. Yeah, the culprit wrapped the body in the tarp, then loaded it onto the dolly and wheeled it off, right? Now, keep in mind that the dolly doesn't have a handle. Well, yeah, but even without a handle, all you'd have to do is bend over. Then you could push the dolly no problem. So the killer just crouched down and carted the body off to the repository. If you accept, then you must realize. Uh, I had it right too. Think I realize. I know. And from there. Yeah, the cop then loaded it on. Now, keep in mind that the dolly. Well, yeah, but even without it, all you'd have to do is bend over. No, that's wrong. Because though you couldn't bend. Absolutely right that you could push a dolly without a handle if you stoop down low. Yes. But if you were wearing that suit, do you think you could actually get into a position like that? What do you mean? Think back to what you said when we were all checking out the suit together. Remember? I'm butt as a button here. My feet. I can't see my feet at all. I'm surprised anyone got in this thing. I'm telling you, it wasn't me. Not to mention, you can tell you totally can't bend at the waist. It seems like a pretty obvious oversight. When you're in that suit, not only can you not see your feet, but you can't even bend at the waist. Am I right about that? Now that you mention it, yeah. It seems like it'd be awfully hard to push that dolly if you couldn't bend over. Well. What's to stop you from simply pushing the dolly with your feet? When you can't even see your feet? You really think someone could kick the dolly all that way? Yeah, it'd be totally impossible. Not that I can say for sure myself. On top of that, if you were wearing such a rigid, cumbersome suit, it's very unlikely you would have the dexterity to go about wrapping the body in a tarp. Well, I mean, isn't that just a matter of taking off the suit when you're ready to move the body? That, there's absolutely no chance the costume was taken off just to move the body because I got it. I don't think taking off the suit was an option. If you remember I don't know what's up with this thing, but I can't actually get it off. A little help. Why would you make something that you can't take off by yourself? I didn't make the stupid frigid thing in the first place. There's a clasp on the back that's keep, keeping you, keeping you from getting it off. Looks pretty sturdy. I don't know. I think you can get it off on your own. I don't really think you have a choice. Let's help him. That's true. It seems. 
it's impossible to put the suit on or take it off without help. Then you really can't take it off by yourself? Hero wasn't just making it up? Absolutely not. Of course I wasn't making it up. If he could have gotten it off by himself, I don't think he would have let us see him wearing it. Showing up in the suit was basically an invitation for everyone to suspect him. Yeah, that's right. So, it's really, really true that Robo Justice couldn't have moved the dolly? To be clear, whoever did move the body, it couldn't have been Hero in the robot suit, correct? No, wait. Just a second, if you please. Have you forgotten about the picture that I took? You all got a good look at it, did you not? The image of Hifumi being dragged away by Robo Justice? If whoever was in that suit is not the culprit, how do you explain that? Besides, do you remember what the now deceased Hifumi said? How did you get hurt? That guy hit me. What guy? Robo Justice! Eh, that's what he thought. Why I decided to call him just now. So long as those facts exist, the proper conclusion is beyond question. She is defending this so hard, I actually think she's the culprit. Like I said before, I thought she was the culprit, and she's defending it way too hard not to be. The individual inside the suit and the culprit are one and the same. It was Hero, without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that's gotta be right. But hold on a second. It's still far too early to reach that conclusion. Agreed. Besides, there's no hurry to decide who did it. Before we rush to a verdict, shouldn't we explore every single possibility? Instead of seizing on one viewpoint, the truth is uncovered by analyzing things from every angle. Perhaps, but where do we go from here? Let's review this series of unfortunate events from the beginning. Maybe we'll uncover something new. Well, let's let Sakura do that. <laughs> what a pain in the ass! I don't disagree, but our lives are on the line. If this is what it takes, we have to do it. Plus, maybe we'll get to find out where the heck Kyoko was when everything went down. All right, then. Let's take another look back at what happened. Yes, cue Sakura. I suppose we could start with this morning. Four of us gathered together in the dining hall. Makoto, Hina... Kyoko and myself. We waited there for quite a while, but nobody else showed up, so we went to look for everyone. That was around 8 a.m. And as soon as we split up, Kyoko went missing. Soon after that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room and quickly came to get Makoto and me. It seems I was unconscious for about an hour after I was attacked by my mystery assailant. I know it was an hour, because I remember being attacked a little after seven. That was when we saw Celeste's picture and discovered that her assailant had been wearing a strange costume. As it turns out, it was Robo Justice. It also soon became clear that this same Robo Justice had abducted Hifumi. We were soon joined in our search by the Akuya and Toko. And then went on to find Hifumi in the library. He was injured, so we took him to the nurse's office and resumed our search for the suspect. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something moving at the top of the stairs. When Celeste told us that, we decided to split up and search the second floor. And soon after that... I saw someone moving around on the third floor, and I yelled out to everyone as soon as I did. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange consumed man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he had to trip down into the hallway and disappeared. And then... Uh, what was that? That came from downstairs. It must have been Hifumi. He is in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we gotta go back. At that point, we decided to divide up into two groups. Celeste, Hina, and I went back to the nurse's office. Yeah. 
while Sakura, Yakuya, and Toko chased after the suspect. When we got back to the nurse's office, we found Hifumi, dead. And that's when we heard the body discovery announcement. I left Celeste and Hina there and headed back to the third floor to let the others know what had happened. Meanwhile, we had just discovered Taka's body in the equipment room. We must have found both bodies at almost exactly the same time. Because we heard the same announcement not long after we discovered his body. And that's when I told you guys about Hifumi. Then the three of us headed for the nurse's office. But right after we left the physics lab, we ran into Celeste, who'd arrived after us. And she told us something very surprising. Hifumi's body has disappeared. We rushed back to the nurse's office and saw that she was right. Then we remembered we'd left Toko passed out in the equipment room, so we hurried back again. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating or something? But when we got there, we discovered that now Taka's body had also gone missing. Next thing we knew, we were searching the school for two missing dead bodies. And after some time... Celeste informed us that she'd found the bodies, and we all headed to the repository, which is where we rediscovered the corpses. I think that about covers it. I see. The whole thing sounds exceptionally complicated. It certainly seems to me that these are not a simple series of connected events. No. Okay, well, if that's true, then what? Rather than a single series of events, I think we have to consider each murder a separate situation. And from there, we can uncover the contradictions surrounding all of them. Now then, let's get started, beginning with what happened to Taka. Contradictions hidden to what ha in what happened to Taka. In order to uncover the truth in this case, I have to find them out no matter what. Okay. Let's figure this out. Broken wristwatch, wristwatch is what I'm going to lean on. So, regarding Taka's death, I wonder if he died before Hifumi. Or perhaps it was after? We already know what order they were killed in. Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was killed with Justice Hammers while Taka's death. See? So it's obvious Taka came after Justice Hammers. It's true that Hifumi was of the Justice Hammers. Shoot. What? How is that not it? The order they were killed in. Shoot. What? Okay, so that has nothing to do with the wristwatch. Oh, what order they were killed in? Came no. Last. The justice hammers. No. I am wrong. Shoot. What am I missing here? Oh, what order they were killed in? Taka came last. What makes you say that? Because of the numbering of the Justice Hammer. No, that's wrong. Hold on. There's no reason to assume that the hammers were used in the same order as their number. Exactly. If anything, that's just another way the killer tried to disguise their actions. So you're saying the culprit wanted us to think the hammers were used in order... But in reality, Taka was killed before Hifumi? Okay, then. Yeah. let's see the proof. Evidence that proves Taka was killed before Hifumi. I feel like there was something. The wristwatch. Hangman's Gambit. Oh, great. Oh, never mind, we're good. Wristwatch. I, 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 I. 
Where are you, I? S. 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 There you are. W. A. T. Watch. See? Look. It broke with the hands pointing just past six o'clock. It must have gotten broken when he was attacked by the killer. Because as of last night. It's almost ten o'clock. You guys know it's bedtime for the little boys and girls. So if it wasn't broken after six last night, and that would be his official time of death. But if that's true, then he was killed well before Hifumi. And before Celeste was attacked this morning, which happened around 7. That's right. Haka was killed before any of the other incidents took place. That simple fact slipped past all of us. We made the wrong assumption about the order of events, all because of those justice hammers. That's exactly why the culprit wrote the numbers on each hammer and had them increase in size. That way, when we saw how they were used in each incident, we'd easily make that wrong assumption. Now, if Taka was killed around six, then everyone's alibis for his murder go out the window. Yep. Because when he was killed, we hadn't met up in the dining hall yet. That may be true in the case of Taka's murder, but all of our alibis still hold true for Hifumi's death. That's right. With him, at least, we're all safe. Yeah. Huh? What was that? I came from downstairs. It must have been. Have me in this. He's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we gotta go back. When we heard Hifumi screaming, we were all together, except for Hiro and Kyoko. Then we all ran down to the nurse's office, and that's where we found his body. That's totally true. We're all in the clear. Oh, I know. They must have recorded him screaming on a tape or something, then played it later on. That's possible, actually. If that's true, where's the tape? That's also Don't true. Know. Don't just go making stuff up. Anyway, we all have rock solid alibis for when we heard Hifumi scream. Since all of us were there together, clearly none of us could have killed him. And it does not stop there. There was also the moment when we discovered his body had disappeared. When his body vanished from the nurse's office, Hina and I were in the bathroom together, while everyone else was in the equipment room, correct? And then there's the disappearance of Taka's body from the equipment room. At that time, we were all gathered together in the nurse's office because of Hifumi going missing. Well, don't forget, I was passed out in the equipment room the whole time. Wait! Then what if Genocide Jill did it? She could have dragged Taka's body out of there right then! Even if she could pull that off, there's no way she could have done the same with Hifumi's body. Because, as we just established, she was passed out in the equipment room when his body disappeared. Besides, they didn't do either of them anyway. In other words, it is impossible that any of us could have killed Hifumi or moved either of their bodies. On the other hand, Hiro and Kyoko had disappeared, so they most certainly could have done those things. Hmm. So what now? So what now, Kyoko? For now, we can't get fixated on who did it, or we'll just keep going around in circles. So instead of who, I propose we start talking about how. In particular, I think we need to figure out how Hifumi's body got moved. That's true. We searched everywhere, but we couldn't figure out how to explain his body disappearing. And according to what Celeste said, we couldn't have not have been gone for more than a minute or two, though. So then the killer was able to get in and move Fumi's body in that short of amount of time. It would seem so. His body apparently disappeared in the one minute her and Hina took their eyes off of it. But to carry that much weight from the first floor up to the third in that short amount of time? I don't buy it. Oh, man, yeah, there's no way. 
It's impossible! Well, what if I told you there was a way to make the impossible possible? What? How? If the dead body were to move itself. What? Not another 